in this video I'm going to share with you how to actually put more conflict into your story. So let's get started. So where can you add more conflict into your story? Now that we've identified these five different types of conflict that are possible within a story, it's time to take a closer look at your story and figure out where you can add more conflict. For the, so the first option of where you can have conflict in your story is your global story. And so what do I mean by a global story? Usually when people refer to or use the term global story, what they're really referring to is your main plot line. In a longer story, you'll have a main storyline and let's call that storyline A. And, and quite often you'll have like a B storyline that eventually hooks up to the A storyline and it just adds more depth to your story. So obviously the first place you want conflict is in this global story. So the types of conflict that you can have here are man versus government, man versus man, man versus nature and obviously man versus supernatural. You don't necessarily just have to have one type of conflict. In my with my book Immunity, I'll use it as an example. I have a conflict where it's man versus a society. So it's James Lalonde versus this pharmaceutical company. And the second type of conflict that's in the main story arc is James Lalonde versus the person that he thinks is solely responsible for the actions of this pharmaceutical company. And he also has a other storylines, there's other things sort of going on. So there's this two other storylines. There's obviously he's moved to New York and he's trying to find out what happened to, to his mother. He figures out that she was a part of a pharmaceutical trial and at the same time he's just landed a, a job for a news company, a, a fictional newspaper called The Daily Voice and that the main editor of The Daily Voice, his name is Patrick Evans and he's one of the most powerful newsmen in the country in this particular fictional world. So he he, I mean, he has a job, so he's proven to this man that he that he's good at what he does. But he also has to keep the job, keep his job, because this because Patrick Evans is one of those newspaper editors who's really he's passionate about the truth and the integrity of the newspaper. He isn't okay with just a flashy headline and really dodgy fact checking. He wants the facts. He wants. The you know, the truth because his newspaper is known for that. So not only has he got this beast, this huge A storyline going with the pharmaceutical company, he then needs to prove to his boss that what he's saying isn't isn't a conspiracy theory, that it's based on these tangible facts. And if he spends too long chasing a storyline that his boss sort of feels like it doesn't have enough supportive evidence to, to support the, the theory behind it, his boss is going to get, you know, really upset and really angry and he's going to be moved off the features desk and probably put somewhere crappy like the classifieds. Something that's truly career ending. So these are the layers of conflict I've got in my story and all of these things come together to create conflict. It adds a timeline and this is sort of basically what a thriller novel does thriller novel does. It layers conflict on top of each other. So if you are writing something, even if you're not writing a thriller, it can be interesting to have a thriller element to your story where you're layering levels of conflict. The second place where you can have conflict in your story has a lot to do with the global story and that is the protagonist versus antagonist relationships. Each of these characters needs to choose a side. They need to have their own motivations, especially the antagonist. Don't make the mistake of creating a two-dimensional villain. Give him reasons for wanting what he wants and make them really compelling. Create your villain to, to the point where you can sort of see why they want what they want even though it's crazy, it's it's seriously wrong, it's very immoral, whatever it is that they, they're after and their, their reasons, it needs to be really compelling. And consider what your protagonist wants as well. They, they need to have a goal, they need to have something motivating them to get what they want. Think about in a similar way that, you know, you're writing a book and you have a reason as to why you want to write a book. 
and you have like an end goal in mind you have your own definition of what success is and all of these things are motivating you to listen to videos like this one to create a daily writing habit and to continually work on your book and work towards this goal your protagonist and antagonist need to have similar motivations like this and also consider you know the personality traits that these particular two characters have and think about the, the personality that personality traits that they might have that might help them get what they want and might hold them back from getting what they want and the same thing needs to be true of your protagonist obviously the antagonist is seriously flawed but your antagonist needs to be flawed as well you don't have to necessarily create an anti-hero but or someone with like a deep disturbing dark past because that's quite cliche but if you give them personality traits like James Lalonde is seriously overconfident he has a problem he takes risks when maybe he shouldn't take risks and yeah these things even though they can being a risk taker and being confident are good things being overly confident and being quick to jump in the deep end not and not check the water type of risk taking can actually be seriously bad and they can stop you from getting the things that you want in life you these things tend to lead to making poor decisions in the moment when you probably need to be making a different decision. So think about the motivations behind these two characters. I know that I mentioned this in, a, in previous videos but I think it's important to revisit it and sort of spend time sort of creating these characters not just once, go back over them as you sort of take the steps, take these steps to writing your book and sort of layer types of conflict think about what they want make them make these characters as real as you possibly can be sort of think about the people that are around you and what they do and the types of motivations that they have and how they interact with other people especially if you if you know a couple of people that really clash that so they can't seem to appreciate each other on any level if you have those people around you pay attention to what they do and how they view each other and use this with your protagonist versus antagonist style relationship so the third place where you can have conflict in your story is with your supporting characters so obviously you have like the main characters in your novel and people don't exist in a vacuum they have other people around them so look at these supporting characters and give each of these characters a motivation just like in real life like everyone around you has a has a motivation whether it concerns you or the other things they have in their lives I don't mean like in a bad way like for instance when I moved from Brisbane to Melbourne and then from Melbourne to London my family weren't too thrilled like I don't mean that in a bad way it's just they loved me they wanted me with them and that's a motivation and it was in conflict with my motivation of wanting to move to Melbourne and London it's not that they stopped me but they they were supportive but I could tell they weren't into it they weren't into it in 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 a way that I was into it so when you're sort of creating the supporting characters really consider that consider them their individual motivations and understand that they will have motivations that aren't in sync with your main character's motivation for instance in, in my novel immunity james is paired with an award-winning journalist sophie baker and sophie baker takes one look at him and his story and thinks this is a complete waste of my time it has no supporting evidence it's she thinks at best it's it's a work of fiction and also she wants to be the first person to land an interview with the person that James suspects is behind everything that's happening with this pharmaceutical company and she thinks it's crazy part of the reason why she thinks this is crazy because she needs to be on this guy's side to get an interview with him because he's media he's notoriously media shy she looks at it as something to check off her you know list of achievements not that she thinks that will get her a Pulitzer Prize by any stretch but she sort of thinks this is something that I want to do and this person is sort of getting in the way of it and his story is sort of wasting my time so what happens is they're constantly butting heads she's constantly really pushing him and sort of saying this is this is crap this isn't you know support this this isn't enough evidence to support this theory you like you're really reaching here 
And in a way it's bad. James thinks that's a bad thing and sort of sees her as something that's in his way. But in reality, even though these two people are clashing, she's forcing him to, to be a good journalist and get the, the evidence that he needs to support his theory. So this is an example of supporting characters. And then obviously he, there are other supporting characters as well. In, in that story. So you obviously got Patrick Evans, he's the editor as I sort of said earlier and his main motivation is to create a newspaper to sort of edit stories that come together to form a newspaper that sells more than the last edition and they're a, day, and they're a daily edition newspaper. So he, he only wants the best stuff on, on the front page so he's not going to put James's He's not going to, you know, immediately put James's story on the front page because that's what James wants. He wants the best story there. So, and he's prepared to give it to whoever has the best story with the, that's as truthful as possible because he, he wants the newspaper to be a beacon of light in a media industry that quite often that sort of sells newspapers that are full of, you know, articles that aren't quite true that are sort of like a spin on the truth. They're picked aside and they're, um, and they're supporting a particular side. Much like the newspapers are today, you can often tell where a newspaper stands when you sort of read the newspaper at election time. You can totally tell which newspaper is being supported or being funded by somebody who's supporting this particular political party and Patrick's aim is to, cre is to create a non-biased beacon of truth. So that's his main motivation. So if that's, that's at odds with what James is wanting to do, James is wanting to bring down a pharmaceutical company and Patrick isn't going to cooperate with him unless he finds the evidence that proves his theory that he doesn't just sort of chase an angle, that he sort of reveals the truth about this. Is your story lacking conflict? Take a few moments and look over your story and pay attention to those moments where everything seems to be going all smooth sailing for your protagonist and consider how you can create obstacles and put obstacles in their way so that they have things that they need to overcome in order to take the next step in their journey. After you've done this, I want you to take a look at your supporting characters. Are they too supportive? Are they all for your protagonist's goal without your protagonist having to go to extreme lengths to win them to, to their side? So I want you to take a few moments and Pay attention to these supporting characters. Don't just have them there as filler content. Make sure that they are, they have their own unique motivations and give them valid reasons for wanting what they want so they seem compelling and they form a part of the rich world you're trying to create in your novel. And thirdly, consider your antagonists. Why do they want what they want? Why are they opposing your protagonist? They need to have a very valid reason for this. No matter if they're an individual or a government body, they need to have a very big reason for doing what they do. The more compelling a antagonist you create, the more conflict that's going to naturally occur in your story. So I would spend time on your antagonists first. Make sure that you create a very rich, not necessarily physical rich, but you know what I mean, like a really deep, complicated villain that is, um, I was tempted to say clear of cliche, but cliche isn't a bad thing. Sometimes cliche is what readers expect in a genre, but just make sure that they're not stereotypical sort of 2D villains, like how sometimes in a cartoon or a bad movie, or a badly written movie, the villain can sometimes be very two-dimensional and then they're almost not believable. They're just evil for the hell of it. Make sure that whatever they do, even if it's immoral, that they've taken a path to get there and that path is believable and understandable. Are you struggling to create conflict in your story? Well, let me know by sharing your thoughts and experiences with creating conflict in the comments section below. If you found this video useful, then give it a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, then click the red subscribe button to get notified for more videos just like this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.